Yo, 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 it's the kid, R-H-I-S-K, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastards. Yeah. And lately I've been thinking about you, baby. No lie, no lie. All right, we got Risk off the porch with us today. Yo, 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 what's good, everybody? I'm feeling good, man. How you feeling today, bro? I'm good, man. Trying to avoid this COVID-19, but yeah. besides that, I'm good. What about you? Uh, same thing, man. Yeah. You know, just thinking of one day at a time. Definitely, definitely. How you been holding up during this pandemic? Uh, just make sure I got enough real loads and enough gas. As <laughs> long as I got that, I'm good. I'm good. Haven't ran out yet? Nah, not yet. Not yeah. yet. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's very important to stay medicated definitely. during these tough stay times. Medicated. So. Uplifted. Yeah, definitely. 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 All right, so you're originally from Opelika, Alabama. Yes, sir. Um, what was your childhood like growing up there? Uh, country. You know, I grew up on a, on a dirt road, in a trailer, in a trailer park. So a lot of no shoes, no socks, playing throw them up, bust them up in the front yard. Just hmm. country living, fishing, walking in the woods. Just a bunch of country stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a small town? Definitely a small town. Population probably was 50,000 when I was there. Okay. So like everybody know everybody that know everybody, you know? <laughs> so like, yeah, definitely. What's there to do there? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> nothing. <really. laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. So if you want to do something, you either go to Montgomery or Tuskegee or Atlanta or Georgia or something. You got to okay. get out of Opelika, though. Nothing to do there. How far away is it from Montgomery and from Atlanta? Uh, probably like 30, 45 minutes to Montgomery. Okay. Hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes from the actual Atlanta, like from the city to city. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So did you spend a lot of time in Montgomery? Kind of just going Definitely. out there at least party or whatever? Definitely. Just to find something to do, find new girls, new gas, everything. <laughs> just got to. Yeah. How old were you when you jumped off the porch? Uh, I say I was pretty young. I say I had to be like 10 or 12. Yeah. Like my dad, my stepdad, he's from California. So like him being from the West Coast and bringing that to Alabama. Hmm. It was just completely different than what anybody was ever used to. So like the freedom, just my leash just got cut oh. basically, you know what I'm saying? So and from there, it was over. It was over. <laughs> Did you get, any, get into any trouble when you were younger? Uh, A little bit, a little bit. That's why we had to move to Georgia because oh, I really? was just kind of doing way too much, like going to Montgomery and Tuskegee way too much. Oh. So we had to switch the strip on me. So we moved to Atlanta. Shit been different ever since. How old were you when you moved to Atlanta? I moved to Atlanta, I was 17. Okay. Yeah, so it caught me right in between being a man and mm. still could, you know what I'm saying? Mom had control a little bit. Yeah. So we moved to Atlanta and we moved to the Ritzy parts too. So oh, we yeah. moved to Sandy Springs. So it okay. was like, whoa, what the hell? <laughs> but I wasn't used to that shit. Like definitely was not used to that shit. But mm. It was a good change though. Was it an easy transition for you? Definitely not. Hmm. Definitely not, because it was probably like six black people at the school and it was a magnet school because like, I always been smart. So hmm. I had the test scores and the numbers. So it was a smart school. So I wasn't used to the work being so hard because in hmm. Opelika, everything is it's easy. It's country town. It's 50,000 population. They're just trying to get you out of there real quick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Next class, next class. So we wasn't learning nothing. So for me, it was easy. But when I moved up here, Man, that's school was school for real. Yeah, like, school was school. Hmm. How many years of school did you have left when you came here to Atlanta? One. Okay. One. Yeah. Did you end up going to college? I did. I did. I went uh, back to Alabama. Okay. I went to Troy University for a little while for okay. two years, and I found out that shit wasn't for me. So I had to figure something else out. <laughs> Like, hey, school ain't for everybody, but if you can do it, then more power to you, but. Yeah. What were you studying at, Troy? I was actually studying uh, law. Really? Like, I had gotten in so much trouble, and my friends were getting in so much trouble. I figured, hey, I'm going to be the lawyer that's going to defend everybody and get everybody <laughs> off. Like, I'm going to get the hood off. Like, that was going to be my job. Hmm. Didn't work out that way, though. Yeah, you got to go to school for a long a time. A long time, like. I was like, hell, and you got to read so many thick ass books. The books is thick as hell. <laughs> like, hell no. Nah. 
So you dropped out of Troy and came back to Atlanta? Came back to Atlanta. Okay. Well, I stayed in Troy for a long time. Hmm. Linked up with some of my good, good homeboys now. Like, looking back on it, it was some wrong choices made. But then my niggas, like, hmm. it is what it is. Yeah. But so I stayed down there, got us in trouble, and then I moved back to Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. What did your parents think of you dropping out of college? Uh... I had a job then, so like I always had the front of I was I always had something else going on. Okay. So like long as I'm happy, my mom doesn't care. <laughs> long as I'm not in jail and I'm happy, she good. Yeah. She good. Yeah. So how long have you been making music now? Uh see, actually in Troy is when I met uh my homeboy Lil Mook. He's from Opelika, Alabama. And he had a studio <laughs> in his dorm room. Oh yeah. And then um, every day after class, we meet up at his dorm and we just rap. Huh. And that's how I fell in love with just making rap music. Like I always used to like write poems and give them to girls and used to be super good at that <laughs> shit. But when I converted the uh, poetry into raps, like that's when I became what I am today. Hmm. So, yeah. Did rapping come natural to you then? Definitely. Like, yeah. it's easy for me to put words on paper, like my thoughts. Like, I'm a thinker, so I'm always thinking. Mm. So it's easy for me to just drop those thoughts right there and just keep it going. Yeah. Yeah. Who were some of your musical influences? Uh, being from Alabama, I have to say Dirty Boys. Okay. You know, uh, Lil Mook, like, just because he put me on... Uh, then I have to say T.I., of course. Mm. Of course, being from the Dirty South, you got to respect the king, man. Shout out to him, man. Uh, that's it for real. Besides that, I stay in my own little bubble. Like, I, I try to do me. I try not to listen and see what everybody else going on, got yeah. going on. I just do what I got to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what did your friends and family think when you started making music? Were they surprised? Did they see it coming? Uh... I think everybody was kind of surprised until they heard the first song. Hmm. Once they heard it, they knew. Like they knew at that moment. Like my mom even went out and bought me the Pro Tools, a Mac, oh, yeah? a microphone. <laughs> like she bought me the whole setup, like <laughs> everything. She was like, here, let's go. <laughs> so like, I say my mom definitely believed. Like she knew, she saw the vision. She knew what I was supposed to do. Yeah. So yeah, my mom, yeah. How long ago was it that you dropped that first song? Uh, it's been a minute. Yeah. I can't even tell you how long it's been. It's been a while since. Like, I even had a different name. Oh, really? I went by Backpack then. Huh. Yeah, like, because every time I used, I, like I was telling you, I used to come from class, and I never took my backpack off. I just started rapping. <laughs> it was kind of like my blanket or something. Like, I don't know, my backpack. <laughs> as long as I had my backpack on, I was spitting five bars. Hmm. So they called me Backpack. And I just rolled with it for a long time, but after a while I grew out of that. So I just had to switch it up and now I'm risk. Hmm. How long ago did you switch it up and why did you switch it to risk? Uh, I switched it up probably like two, three years ago. And I switched it to risk just cause life is a gamble, take a chance. Hmm. So risk, like, and that's what I'm about. Like my music is a risk. I'm a risk, like everything I do, like waking up in the morning, you never know what could happen. So it's a gamble, take a risk, 2020. Yeah. How would you classify your music? Uh, I wouldn't classify my music in like a specific genre or category. Like I would just say, I make timeless music. Like if you were to bury my songs that I got out right now, and in a hundred years, somebody would dig those up. Like people would still feel those songs then. So I would just say I make classics, timeless music. Mm. So I don't want to put a genre or a title on just classics. Yeah. Are you still writing your music today? Definitely. Okay. Old fashioned too. No phone, pen and paper, really? notebook. I need to see the lyrics, everything. Oh. Classic. Hmm. 20 minutes though, I'm done. That's it? That's it. Oh, 20 sure. minutes. What's the message in your music? It depends on the vibe of the day. Like, I'm a day-to-day -day message guy. So if I'm having an up day, then you're going to get an upbeat song, an uplifting song. If I'm having a down song, like you're going to get a, a past memory that made me feel down. And hopefully that'll connect or vibe with people in that moment. Yeah. 
What was the first song that really got you some attention, got you a little buzz? Uh, I would say pretend. Okay. Yeah, definitely pretend. Like it's still going right now. Like yeah. that's why I'm here. Pretend. Yeah, yeah, for real. You dropped that one last year, right? Last year, yeah. Yeah. What can you tell us about that song, Pretend? Uh, that song based off true events. I hate to say it. Hmm. Like I actually caught my old lady at the bar with another guy. Hmm. Like I pulled up with my homies. Boom, we get out. We first we go to one bar. And it was and it was too full, so we couldn't have seen at that moment. So then we're like, nah, let's go to this other one. Mm. Boom. So we go to the other one. First thing I see is her with another dude. And the funny thing is, he looked just like me, except he was swole. Like he was just <laughs> me really? on steroids. So it was just like, really? <laughs> but that's all I can say about that. Like, just based off real events, a real night, a real fucked up night. Did you confront her right then and there? Heck yeah, after a few Hennessy's. <laughs> <After> <laughs> like, Hennessy, yeah. yeah, after a few Hennessy's, I felt like the Hulk too. And so he was huh. like, okay, it's going down. Hmm. A lot of fucked up shit happened that night, but hmm. we passed it, man, we passed it. What was her reaction when you walked up and confronted her? Shocked in a motherfucker. Huh. Her and all her friends was like, what are you doing here, Riz? I was like, what the hell y'all doing here? Hmm. Like, it was. It was a crazy night. How long were you and that girl dating at the time? We had been dating like two years. Oh, shit. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Was that here in Atlanta? Yeah. Oh, shit. That was doing that hot girl summer shit. Like, <laughs> for some niggas, it was real hot for some of us. I'm telling you, it was real hot. It barely made it out the kitchen, man. <laughs> <laughs> so how long after that incident did you write this song? I actually wrote the song right after it, but I wasn't going to record it. Hmm. I was going to wait and save it. But then something happened and my engineer was like, bro, we need to record this right now. And then shout out top class, man. Hmm. After that, we just, we did it. So shout out him for pushing me to do it. And that's why I'm here. Hmm. Was it very therapeutic writing and recording that definitely, song? Definitely, definitely. That's why I slick don't like performing it because it, you got to, you got to, I got to channel that energy, you know, I like, but it is what it is. Hmm. Who produced that record? Uh, Taylor Made Beats. Okay. Yeah. Shout out Taylor, man. Yeah. You mentioned this is your biggest song to date. Like people were fucking with it right away. Definitely. I mean, yeah, definitely, definitely. Definitely. Like once you, especially if you by yourself, I know it's a lot of thugs and killers out there who don't have feelings and stuff. But when you hit that pretend and you by yourself, you got to feel it. Like you got to feel it. It's like, it's one of them kind of records. Like you ain't got no choice. Yeah. Did you have a lot of people reaching out to you saying they could relate to it and all Definitely. that? Definitely. DM full, like mm -hmm. especially the women. Oh, F him, F him. You know, <laughs> especially the women. Thank you. This helped me, got me through this. Huh. And that's how I knew I was making good music and progress. Like, okay, like my music is actually touching people. Like, yeah. in a time of need, people turning on this song and being able to vibe and cope and live. Yeah. So, yeah, that's dope. How did that make you feel when you saw those messages? Awesome. I ain't even gonna lie. It made me feel great, man. Like, I knew I was doing the right thing. Hmm. I just how I knew I just had to keep being me. Yeah. Stay in my lane. Yeah, definitely. And um, your new single, Lately. Yeah. That's a prequel to Pretend? Yeah, kind of in a way. Hmm. In a way, it, it, it kind of turned out that way. So, yeah. Hmm. We're going to say yeah. So what can you tell us about the song, Lately? Uh, lately is just about a dude who just, who with another chick, but he thinking about another chick. Hmm. So, it's just, lately I've been thinking about you, but when I think about you, you drive me crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, damn. Yeah, that's what lately is. Kind of the prequel, yeah. Yeah. And you just shot the music video for this song, too. Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. Who shot that video? Uh, shot by Dre. Okay. Shout out Dre, man. Appreciate you, man. Yeah. That was your first music video? De yes, yes, man. It was an experience. I'm not <laughs> even going to lie. Up, some ups, some downs, but it was definitely an experience, man. I'm glad we got it done, though. What were some of the ups and downs you had while shooting it? 
Uh, well, we had girls cancel locations that we couldn't make on time because we was waiting on this. But the ups was that we just, uh, me, the underdogs, me and Dre, we just put our heads together and we came up with the, the ending concept after all the pitfalls. So just ups and downs, man. But you live and you learn. That's what life is about. Yeah. So, yeah. So you were very hands on with this video, huh? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely, I'm hands on with all my music in the engineering. Mm -hmm. I'm in the mixing room with the with the engineer. Hey, take that back. No, I don't want that right there. Move the beat right here. No, yes, yeah. so I'm very definitely, mm -hmm. yeah. And who produced lately? Who produced lately? Uh, Taylor Made Beats as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How'd you link up with him? Uh, internet. Internet. Yeah. Internet beat stars, man. And <laughs> but lately, I just he just been sending me his own personal beat packs lately since the uh, pretend vibe and the lately. So we just got a little connection going on. Yeah. And how's the feedback been on lately? Feedback on lately been dope, man. We're doing numbers on YouTube, doing numbers on Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere, man. Go check that out right now, lately. And your next single will be Man Cave? Yes, sir. What can fans expect to hear on this song? It's kind of like, I'm going to say it's going. It's the ending of the trilogy. Okay. Like Man Cave is like, all right, bitch, you done did what you done did. Now it's my turn. Like, get out of my face. I'm tired of this shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm going to my Man Cave. You know, I'm out. So that's what Man Cave is, but it's the male version of it, though. Okay. So kind of based on your actual reaction to the right, emotions right. that you went through with this one. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Okay. And who produced this one? Uh, who produced this one? Uh, Lynx Beaks. Okay. Yeah, Lynx, man. I switched it up. Lynx produced this one, man. Shout out to Lynx. It's a dope one. Yeah. I see you got a video coming for that one, too, right? Definitely. Coming hard. Definitely. Fast and Furious. When do you think that single will be out? Uh, we're gonna try to shoot for uh, what month is it right now? March. March. We're gonna shoot for the end of March. Okay. Yeah. So it might definitely. be out by the time this is out there. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, pretty soon. Okay. And you're working on your debut project. Yes. Duke. Duke. My debut EP coming soon. Don't have a date for that yet though, but it's just all those songs compiled into one project. Hmm. Just all those feelings, those emotions, just on one project. And we're just going to put it out and see how people vibe with it. Why'd you choose that title, Duke? Uh, it's actually from one of my favorite movies, The Five Heartbeats. Like one of the characters, his name was Duke. Uh, my favorite line in the movie, one of the uh, other characters say, you'll become a great writer once you experience a lot of pain. And I just feel like that's what my life has been. Just a lot of ups, a lot of downs. And like, that's what I really write about. That's why I said it just depends on my mood on the day to day what my music is about. Like some days I'm up, some days I'm down. So I just learned to really put that into music form. And that's what I, that's what Duke is. Hmm. Okay. Will it be just the three songs or will it be more songs on there? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna give you seven. Okay. I'm gonna give you seven. So it's gonna be the three singles and then four unreleased songs. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Probably this summer though? Yeah, definitely, definitely, okay. definitely. And I also got some bangers coming this summer too. Hmm. On a different type of vibe. On a different type of vibe. On a different type of vibe. Got you. I got you. Uh, how'd you link up with Gambino? Uh, man, Gambino, that's the homie, man. So it ain't enough for me to just call him and hit him up. And he always trying to help me push my music for me to be the best me, man. So shout out Gambino, man. Yeah. What's some of the best advice he's given you about the music industry? Uh, stay focused. Like, that's what he always pushing me, man. Hey, stay focused. He texts me every day. Hey, stay focused. We got to stay on this. Hey, risk. Hey, you did this, you did that. Hey, risk. So shout out Gambino for staying on top of me, man, and believing in, for believing in me, man. Shout out Gambino. That's what's up, bro. Uh, who are some artists and producers you would like to work with one day? Uh, Everybody. I don't want to just say I want to work with this person, that person. I love to work with everybody, anybody who making music, man. So anybody who want to link up, Get at me, man. Shoot me a DM. Shoot Gambino a DM. It, it's nothing. Let's do it. Uh, you have your own label right now? Uh, nah, right now, nah. Okay. Still just fully independent then? Still just fully independent. Yeah. Um, if you were to sign, what would you look for with a label? Uh, just, a, just somebody who would do the right partnership. I mean, it's not all about the money up front. I know the bag gonna come because the music is quality. So I ain't worried about the money right now. Just as long as we had a good deal I'm, and that I'm comfortable with, yeah. that's all that matters. Yeah. 
with some of your goals for your music career? Uh, got to win a Grammy, man. Grammy. Got to win. I'm going big. Got to <laughs> win a Grammy, man. Like, that's number one. Grammy. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Grammy. What about short term, though? Short term. Short term, I would say definitely find somebody to partner with. Okay. Uh, like a big investor, somebody that can, uh, uh, some kind of small machine to help facilitate the the pushing of the music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? One thing I will say about this industry is you need something to help you push it and get it out there. Like nothing happens overnight. Like you got to work at it. So yeah, just something else and somebody else to help push. Yeah, that's real. You still working a regular job right now? Hell yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> How do you balance the two? I'm not gonna lie, it's hard. I be late some mornings. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but good thing I'm the boss though, so I can be a little okay. late, so. <laughs> nah, that's what's up. All right, Risk, any last words, any shout outs? Man, just shout out y'all for having me, man. Shout out Gambino, me the underdogs, man. Just appreciate everybody. And lately I've been thinking about you, baby.